Uh, Amit, first of all, uh, I just wanted to warmly welcome you on uh, Film Me Show Me. It's wonderful to be in conversation with you. And uh, I just wanted to say a huge congratulations on your successful streak so far. I mean, lockdown has been a busy period for you as you've had multiple releases. I mean, Shakuntala Devi, Avrod, Breathe, Yara. So has this been a phase that you've always been working towards as an actor? Uh, no, such things. Uh, firstly, thank you so much for uh, doing this with me and, uh, you know, getting on. And my apologies for the delay. There was some internet problem. And thank you for your patience. <laughs> uh, coming back to your question, you don't plan these things. Because as an actor, as an artist, uh, uh, you don't plan phases. You don't plan releases. You plan to be authentic. You plan to get good parts. Mm -hmm. And then you plan to give them all. and then. That plan is also irrelevant because you got to keep searching, keep digging, keep living life. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the entangling of life is where I think art or acting comes. So I've, I've just been doing my bit. Uh, I've been fortunate to get some good parts. I've been fortunate to work with some very good visionary people who back me as an actor, back my talent. And it's just a coincidence mm -hmm. that all of this kind of has come uh, I could bring this and showcase uh, to the audiences mm. and uh, so you know it's like we plan but there's a bigger plan which is by the <laughs> master you know so yeah yeah no absolutely I think that's very well summarized as well um, you've always made an impact with your work as an actor uh, in versatile films and especially characters which are of you know just you know of various shades as well so how content are you with your journey so far uh, it is a kind of a, a contradiction in this, you know, I always call myself the dance of contradiction, but I think uh, in any kind of form of art, you need that contradiction. So I'm, I'm a very content human being, you know, I've kind of worked on being content, but I'm also very, very overly ambitious, but not for ambition, but for hunger, my ambitiousness. Of my ambition is not for ambition, it's for hunger. And uh, uh, so, though I've trained myself physically, mentally, to have that poise, to have that calmness, to have that content, yet, mm. yet when I get a part, I'm like this raging bull who wants to do everything possible to be that part, to become that character. And it's, yeah. uh, it's a process and uh, it continues it's sometimes i feel it's getting better sometimes i feel it's very exhausting sometimes i feel these are just different emotions that come and go i think uh, for the future for now till the time i keep getting good parts till the time i get good stories to tell and i can be entangled in this being content and in being a raging bull at the same time i'm uh, i think things things should be good wow Wow, that was a uh, wow. I mean, I, I think that's uh, very, very beautifully put as well. Um, speaking a bit more about your roles and your craft as an actor, how, what is your approach to the characters you do, especially when uh, they are of a darker shade? Like, for example, we've seen in films like Sarkar and uh, Kaipoche, for example. So, what is your approach like in doing characters which are of on the darker side, so to speak? A beautiful question. Thank you for kind of putting this. So uh, since you've mentioned two films, I'm going to kind of give you an introspect from them. So if you see um, Sarkar, in Sarkar, I'm not dark. I'm the light. I'm the protector. You know, and somehow uh, I just love being the protector. It comes very naturally to me. But I'm not a protector in a like if you see me in daylight, especially, yes, exactly. In daylight, if you see Chiku, uh, you actually kind of question him. Is he, is he revenge or is he actually a protect Sarkar? Uh, huge, huge credit to the right of uh, Mr. Ram Gopal Verma, who, uh, especially in this world, I think he's untouchable. And, uh, uh, and his actions are misguiding. His actions are misleading. He's borderline dark like you said and then eventually in the end you realize dude he's just a young guy a modern day guy of today's world who is not apologetic of being who he is yet his morals and his principles are on point 
coming now I'm going to stitch this to reality in reality we in as a society have been pushed to refrain from everything walk a certain way then you're good talk a certain way diplomacy blah 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 okay then you're good you are not this then you're black and i think all these walls have been diminished you know because viewership has changed internet has changed the whole world they've they've, been, they've changed and affected our psyche so coming back to why i like these roles or why i think these roles choose me i think they're not dark i think they're just so carried by passion by objectivity and i think and these roles have affected me by the way uh, to like they've affected my psyche they've affected my personality and i think when you're guided by this passion by by this force by this objectivity you don't care you are being perceived yeah so these characters have affected me in a good way my psyche and my personality and if you ask me that uh, especially characters that are driven by objectivity by passion they don't care like these characters don't care how they are perceived by society they're so driven by their goal by their mission which eventually if you see in the end is positive it's right even like kabir sawant i mean in breed he's a protector but he doesn't follow the norms of society like there are people i mean you would know i know so many people who in power or not in power they they are very personality driven they're very they have their own objectivity they don't listen to what has been told to them and i'm very very lucky i think i'm very fortunate that i get to play these complex characters in addition as an actor i have this are about damaged you know which are kind of misunderstood by the world and i love such characters i i want to kind of continue making good that's the real world we all are damaged we all are struggling we all but to find light to find objectivity to find passion uh, these are characters which i kind of uh, i'm always seeing these characters come to me wow yes uh, i think that's very true and um i think it's a good way of describing them actually because they're not necessarily dark they're just um uh, i'd probably just say gray right like they're not they're just characters which are sort of that goes against the paradigms of what we consider to be light in 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 the actual world and i think that's a very uh, well summarized um description of the characters as well that you do but having played roles which are also inspired by real life personalities like in shakuntala devi and gold what is most challenging as an actor um for you to is it to play fictional characters or non fictional characters so i just think doing a role or a part is not challenging because when you love something you do it's a challenge you know uh like what i the example that i gave earlier like for you it's not challenging to take an interview because you you take interviews you wanted to do this all your life you're excited to do it but what is a challenge is that how can you dig in and ask such questions where amit can be his most honest and authentic so you can present a new amit to the people who are going to watch this interview same way when when i get a role i'm just challenged it's a challenge and um, the difference between doing a biopic and a you know uh, and 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 the other uh, and, and and something which is on real life incident to something which is being created i think uh, a biopic or something on true events has been researched you have a lot uh, in the screenplay and the narrative you know about the character about how he walks sits history depiction uh, so there's of course a huge challenge in it to become that but that at least you know what you have to do but when you're creating characters like uh, say kabir sawan or breed mm. there you know you have to bring a lot of your life a lot uh, uh, you are also dependent on the writing process you know right. there your dependency on the writing process is much higher uh, and then uh, again you need your director more i'm then saying from my personal experience 
and of course you have to dig in more you have to bring more and then it's more personality driven because then you are infusing your personality and your understanding to the narrative and then you're creating something which is new um and so but again to be honest the end and the end of the day you have to just dig in i just think acting is about just digging in you know continuously asking questions how what where when you know and uh, and i've been very lucky to love the people that i've worked with my directors my producers they have been very very uh, supportive to my um, uh, you know uh, to my method and uh, they i think what i really appreciate with the people i work they are able to kind of guide me lead me uh, the energy and the enthusiasm that i have as an actor in the right direction i mean it's very true actually because i often when i have you know when i do interviews with actors and artists about their craft i have often heard that they sometimes reflect on an experience which is closest to them relating to the character that they're playing so whenever um you're playing a real life character or a character which is perhaps slightly um gray like we mentioned earlier in the interview what aspect of your life do you sort of dive into what would you say is that moment that you always think back to uh in bringing out the authentic emotions of that character i mean i've done a lot of uh animal study i do a lot of method acting which i learned at lee strasberg um sometimes it changes scene to scene sometimes it changes roles to roles uh but uh i think in uh just as a base i just think that uh uh i i think i listen one of the most powerful tools for any artist any actor is to listen listen to the script listen to your co-actors listen to your costume your your writing your director and it's just it's a job of listening observation listen observation listen observation and that kind of me uh, become and i think if you leave your ego and if you're humble it's easier for you to mold and become different people Oh indeed and i think sometimes ego does uh act as a massive hurdle uh, i think for us as not well, sometimes every time <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely it acts as a big big hurdle i think um even even i think uh, spiritually as well for us to yes. attain a certain stage as well you have to break that boundaries of ego and i think that is very you know uh, aptly said and i'm really glad you mentioned that as well um but obviously you broke through the industry without any filmy connections and you continue to stand strong on your merit and on on your talent uh so what has been your greatest strength throughout my uh greatest strength is that uh i think i'm a gladiator and this world and the movie industry and every hurdle and a challenge is like a colosseum you know and you put your armor on and you keep fighting you keep fighting you keep digging you keep digging and you never give up but when you're not in the colosseum and you're inside in prison or in your nowhere in in your tunnel or in your um, you know aspect of what you speak what you think how you behave and then you come back to the colosseum to fight and that's what i do right i think um yeah so i think uh it's it's interesting you say that because i think um shakespeare had one is it shakespeare who once said that the world's a stage um and i think it's 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 quite true i feel um geographical locations in particular um i are you know sort of represent life and uh our ideologies on life as well and i think uh, yes you definitely are a gladiator and speaking on that very fighting note as well struggles are tough and they almost seem very impossible i think when you're in that process um so how tough was that struggle period for you and what was the greatest learning for you at that point so bro i'll tell you uh, as a human being we are always struggling if you meet the richest person in the world he'll say he is also struggling i think the magnitude the capacity of struggle and to deal with struggle changes uh in the struggle to be honest when i was younger was to pay my rent on time to uh 
you know, to just to be able to eat food on time, you know. And then that went to to buy a good pair of shoes. Then the struggle went to to buy like two two hats. Then the struggle went to, and then there are two struggles. One are your wants as a human being, which we are allowed to want and wish what we want. And then there's a struggle as an actor. I, I want to act. I become an actor. I wanted a role. I gave a, got a 10-minute role. Then I wanted a 30-minute role. We are greedy, you know, and it's okay. And then I wanted a 30-minute role. Then I chew a 30-minute role. Then I wanted a 90-minute role. Then I got a 90-minute role. Uh, but again, what, your wants have to be backed by your intent, by your will, and what you do, you know, in close doors. So uh, I think struggle will never end. And then there's a struggle of being humane. There's a struggle of being relevant to the society, to the people around. I think then your life has purpose. If you're just going to live like an animal who come to your doorstep, eat, you know, and go and come back next time when you're hungry, then the, the purpose of being human beings is lost. Yeah, so I was just kind of summing it up. That for me, um, by God's grace, I don't have to worry about my rent, at least for now. You know, I pay my rent on time. Uh, for roles, I'm uh, the characters, and I'm very fortunate with a lot of love from that I get from so many people. Uh, and um, uh, even journalists and the media has been so clean. Yeah, you know, you guys take out time to talk to me, to... Uh, understand me better uh, the people in India and abroad a lot of Indians you know how they support me and they but so by God's grace I have I have good roles now you know but some aspect of struggle what I wanted to conclude is will always continue but the struggle is for a higher purpose for a bigger purpose mm -hmm. and um, the struggle is for a higher purpose as you mentioned uh, but what would you think would be the approach to maintain that higher purpose what actions would you proactively take to attain that i think more than the action what matters in this scenario of higher purpose is your intent because our intent gives us our action and uh, and that is, I mean, it might sound a little f philosophical, but as a human being, it's a decision you make. Am I just going to be selfish, greedy, you know, and be self-centered and not worry about anyone and just keep walking straight? Fair enough. Nobody's judging you. It's a call you take by yourself. Or the belief system that I have, that is my success, my learning, my achievement, leave a good residue behind so that it can inspire people and can my whatever I'm acquiring or whatever I'm receiving from the universe from the world, from acting, from blah 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 blah, can I kind of share this with the world? Can I give some of this? Some of this learning some of this falling, failing you know, some of this success so, and I always, I believe this personally for myself that real success is that when your happiness your achievement you're moving forward in life. You're achieving dreams. It's also helping other people. Mm. Yes. And I'm really glad we're having this discussion, Amit, because I feel like it's very difficult. You know, when you're in an industry like um, acting, uh, where it's all about the glamour, it's all about a race to reach number one. It's, it's very cutthroat as well. You know, regardless of whether you see um, competition, you know, outside or not, there is obviously still that notion there. You know, there's always that constant, it's almost like as if it's bound by materialistic expectations in life. So, I mean, going by the responses that I've heard from you, and it seems it's so refreshing to hear this very profound and philosophical uh, responses. But, you know, how do you Stop. get that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you, how do you get, how do you maintain that right balance on it? You know, when you're working so, in an industry, yeah. like the film industry, um, and yet you have these very beautiful and very um, profound beliefs. How do you maintain that balance to make sure you stable yourself mentally? I'll have two answers for this. Firstly, I'll uh, uh, go to the start of your question. Uh, I partially disagree and agree with you. What you are saying is as a mean mode medium, like, yes, it is like that. 
but let me assure you that there are good people. If they were not good people, somebody like me who knew nothing, you know, uh, wouldn't have survived, wouldn't have learned or wouldn't have been given so many opportunities. As a whole, that is something which I think collectively we need to rise above and make sure that in the next 10 years or 20 years, when somebody is in, introducing my industry, they don't use this word. So that's my, that's my dream. That 10 years down from now, 20 years down from now, if somebody's talking about in my industry, they say it's better, right? Coming back to the last part of your question, for me, yeah. it's, uh, it's very simple, you know? Uh, it's for me is, be a good person first, morally, principally, because until then, you can't be an effective actor. Like if you lack in empathy and, and compassion, do you really think you can act? Yeah, you can act. You can make money. You can get big cars. But will you be able to affect a billion people? No. You know? So I'm not, I'm blessed. Second thing, uh, which I want to share with you, when I was growing up, a lot of people were very, very harsh, bad, and all the things that you are saying to me. At that time, I used to make a mental note in my diary. I should not write the day, names because I, I'm not a gradual human being. I used to write that this happened to me, this happened to me. And when I'm in a position where there are people looking up to me, or they need, they need my uh, warmth and just, I'm not going to behave like that. But I think, uh, you know, just speaking about difficult times as well. And I think, yes, it's really wonderful that you have uh, this approach. And it is important. Humanity comes always comes first. You know, pehle insaniyat aati hai, phir baad mein wo tags aate hai, relationship ke aur ek insaan ke, wo baad mein aate hai. And I think that's definitely a philosophy that I've grown up um, sort of uh, hearing about as well. Um, but when I was preparing for our chat today, you know, I did read somewhere that apparently you were banned by television industry. Why was this the case? And how did you deal with that at that point? Yeah, I mean, I shared this. It was never in my uh, thing to share this because what's gone is gone. Uh, I don't want to get into why, what, because it's too far. It's too old. But I can just say all to all people, all young people who are uh, listening to this, that don't worry about anything. Keep digging, keep digging, keep digging. And there's only one superpower. That is your God. He will decide. And there's another thing that you have in your hand is your karma. So obviously it's wonderful also to see actors um, like yourself uh, who began with television now break through in, and make big waves in Bollywood uh, and Indian cinema as a whole. Uh, and since you've covered the main formats of entertainment, I mean, beginning from television to like cinema and now obviously... Uh, the OTT as well. Uh, what importance does diversity play, especially in terms of the platform in an actor's world? I mean, uh, to be honest, I'm not kind of. Uh, every platform has a certain reach. And it's not the platform that matters. What matters is people, people you work with. And I am of this very, very strong belief that if you make something good, if you tell a good story, the audience is so smart. The audience is so uh, large hearted, you know, that they will find you and they will support you and they will love you. Yes. If they see that you are genuine, if they see you are a hardworking person, they will applaud you. If you cheat people, it, it won't last long. Whether it's in cinema, whether it's in real life, whether it's an interview relationship, you cheat people once, twice, and third time they'll cut you out. Yeah, I think um, I spoke with Ranveer Singh actually. I think last year for uh, um, uh, for Gully Boy actually, and uh, mm -hmm. he did mention. He's brilliant in it. Yeah, he was. He was incredible. And uh, he did mention something along the lines of um, the fact that the whole landscape of cinema is changing. Like what we used to divide as commercial and non-commercial now, it's all become on one sort of uh, platform now. And uh, to a certain extent as well, it's the fact that um, uh, you can't trick the audience anymore as well. So what do you think has contributed towards um, 
So what do you think has contributed towards uh, the audience becoming more alert and aware of um, this type of content they're consuming? No, so I have a different uh, understanding to that. I think the audience was always alert. The audience was always educated. They always had a voice. We don't regard them. We didn't give them their due. The audience was always there to cherish us, to applaud us, our, our hard work, our movies, our stories. And I think the internet and again, all these OTT and us learning new ways of communication and the directness today between cinema, cinema makers and audiences kind of, you know, nobody's God. I think earlier actors were God and like people who are good at anything were God. <laughs> Today, the world knows nobody's a god. You're doing for your own bloody rent. You're working hard for your own dreams and selfish reasons. So calm the F down, right? Right. So the audience yeah. also knows that. Audience, you know, so I, I think it's just the new age. It's the new world where everybody is equal. You come, work hard, shine, take your trophy, get lost. <laughs> Spot on. I mean, that was spot on. I really, really love. I'm, I'm so glad I'm, I'm having this discussion with you. I've never heard such a, a direct and honest response. And this is exactly what I wanted to hear. I'm really glad that. Uh, um, you're having this discussion. You're very, you're, you're, you seem like a very affectionate and a warm person. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but you know, uh, Amit, I think just speaking on that note as well. I mean. There's been a lot happening, I think, in Bollywood at the moment. Quite a few things, which obviously I'm sure you're all aware about. Um, and obviously with the events that have occurred recently, you know, it has kind of been this whole debate that's arisen, um, and especially uh, regarding outsiders, so to speak. And there seems to be like this whole notion that outsiders have to be careful when working in this industry. Would you agree or disagree with this? Yes, but we will defeat that. We will break that. You know, and uh, I've spoken a lot about this, but I uh, definitely want to tell you that my dream is that in 10 years or in five years or maybe in one year, we stop this conversation that it becomes. And when will we stop this conversation? When it becomes irrelevant. Right now it is relevant. And that's why we have to talk about it. Right. But my eventual dream, I always attach positivity. I always attach hope to everything. That's why I answer, you see, my way of answering things is a little ulta, you know? So that's, that's just this innate uh, optimism in me. So that's my dream. But that will only happen when people in power, people in position, even insiders who be, outsiders who become insiders and then they change. They ah, forget yeah. that they were outsiders. Ah, true. They forget that once they were down, you know, they were down under the ladder. When mm -hmm. they go up, if they don't hold back, have you ever, have you ever seen a CD? So, two types of people. One is the CD, and the CD 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 is the CD, and the Yes. And all people, all people who don't believe in equality, all people who uh, kind of do this uh, wrongs, like, you know, who kind of don't allow this system to brew and grow, should politely, with love and explained. And, uh, and we have to do this collectively as an industry, as people as country without abusing without accusing without shaming people shaming people we have to educate each other but we have but we have to educate each other that we are all equal we will all have equal rights men women country yes and um i think this is this is it you know i feel like the industry isn't uh you know, kisi ki nahi hai, sab ki hai industry. It's 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 a collective industry. It's where everyone is working towards it, and you know, is a co co industry ki baat bhi nahi hai, yar. Main karo ye ye desh. Sirf industry ki baat nahi hai, desh sab ka hai. Yeah, right. So not a bunch of people should not be allowed to ridicule. And and I think Indian film industry is India. Hmm. Hum and people in position and power, seniors. People who we should be visionary. We should make sure that there are thousand actors here. 
why only we want 50 actors in bombay you know why can't we do workshop in uttara in uttarakhand or anurachal pradesh or mizoram do you think people don't know how to act there do you know how talented people are there they all musicians half of them i know from east they are like rock stars mm. have you seen the kind of folk and the dance and the music people in punjab create Yeah. there's some amazing punjabi movies are being made there's oh, such oh. amazing uh, films in south if you see films in malayalam films i have started watching a lot of malayalam films yeah so i just think that now we need to forget making few gods and now let's make you know go and search for artists tell more stories you know a cinema is a big reflection of the country cinema affects the society cinema has that power art has that power so that is the positive you know i like saying that that's moving north i hope we move north yes but i think the i think the issue again lies with the people in power and i think until we or people who are like yourselves who wish to see a better change in the industry and in the world and whatever i think until you get to that stage don't worry don't good. worry mai seed mai mai seed nahi chhodunga aap tension mat lo <laughs> good i hope not <laughs> good 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 and that's what i want to hear and i'm really glad um so i think we were speaking about the emergence of the web earlier as well about the whole appetite of um you know the audience's appetite for content as well and how the audience has always been alert and aware according to you um so with the emergence of the digital space it seems like uh, uh like i said the audience's appetite has changed too as we mentioned so what difference will we now see in the landscape of indian entertainment post the covid-19 phase that is yet to uh yet to be seen yet to be because i think uh how these couple of months have infiltrated us as human beings and i would like to believe other than the hardships which some people or many people health wise economic ec- uh, economically have gone through but as human beings the way th- this time has allowed us to reflect to introspect i definitely feel we'll come out of it as strong so i just don't want to talk about cinema i'm just thinking aloud in terms of the society in terms of the 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 country as a whole and once we change it will reflect in whatever we do what change do you think you know, so i think we will we will now yeah so in terms of cinema i think we'll be will be more courageous to be uh, to make better stories i think um uh, uh we'll be we'll be better with the audience we'll learn how to communicate better with them and uh, uh you know and uh, and bring be- better stories to to work harder and to understand that you know in this time uh, cinema is just not for entertainment and just on the pretext of entertainment you just can't do anything you know so i i i'm i'm very optimistic that going further from here uh these four months the way it has taught us uh and uh, i'm sure it'll bring us together because as a nation especially we need to come uh, we need to come together yeah definitely i agree with that one as well um so i was talking about um there will be a change right so what sort of change do you think uh that will be in particular so for me change is very simple changing you is changing the world so change yourself the change you want to see in the world if you want people not to litter on the ground then you stop litt- littering on the ground you want people to stop your car when an elderly lady or an elderly person is crossing the road you stop the car so i feel my philosophy is to change you the world will change hmm sure sure um and obviously going forward because you've covered such a wide spectrum uh of performances and characters uh but what sort of works are you keen on exploring henceforth what sort of work do you think would um be that sort of cusp for you as an actor i think i've done nothing i'm just starting and i hope that my industry and the filmmakers the writers the producers they give me more challenge they give me more work because i am very hungry and i want to chew more mhm right well i think uh, you're definitely going to be getting a lot more work i can definitely vouch for that and you're going to get some more amazing work as well uh, uh amit Thank i can you. definitely vouch for that as well because i think seeing your career graph uh, i think since what kai poche to um 
uh, Yara recently. I think just seeing that graph, it's just, it's always been on an upward tra trajectory and I think it's only going to increase uh, as time comes. So I just wanted to say, Amit, thank you so much for joining me on Film Missionary for today's conversation. I think I've been wanting to have a very uh, candid chat about life and philosophy and how the indus and how that works with the industry for a long time and you were exactly that person that I could have that with. So thank you so much for joining me in today's chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The credit of this wonderful chat goes to you. You're awesome. You're such a good listener. And I really appreciate the questions that you kind of brought. And I really enjoyed our discussion and uh, looking forward to more chats. 100% definitely. But wishing you all the very best, Amit. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless and take care of yourself. Mm -hmm.